What's going guys, ready for the part two of the study plan? Well, it looks something like that. And there's going to be a link in the description box down below. Take a second, go and print it out. So as you heard, this is going to be the part two of the studying plan. So if you haven't done part one, this part is not gonna make sense and it's gonna actually slow you down and might even decrease your score. So go to this part one, try it out, and then come back to part two when you're done with part one. So part two of the summer study plan is actually going to be the practice exams. And I'm gonna tell you exactly when and how to take these practice exams so that you can get the most out of it. And these exams are actually the real SAT from the College Board. So the results you'll be getting from this practice exam is going to be a good indicator of where you are in terms of the SAT math section. And before we get started, Started, couple housekeeping stuff. First, if you are studying for the SAT right now, and especially with the studying plan, then join our Facebook community. It's the Hackers Mastermind group where I'm in there too, and you can ask me any questions and get answers to them right away. Second, if you've been following my channel for a while and you've been enjoying my videos, then make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn the notification bell on because it really helps the channel out with the YouTube algorithm, and you're going to be notified when I drop more of these helpful videos. And third, most importantly, make sure you go and smash the like button to raise your SAT score. So if you have Join the Facebook community, like the video, and subscribe to the channel. Then let's get straight into the video and start raising your SAT score. So summer study plan, phase two, let's get straight into it. If you print it out, it's going to look something like this. So what's at the top is going to be the little calendar schedule for the next 28 days. And down below, we are going to have the exam links. So what are we going to do on the first day? Well, we are going to solve section three. So you're going to print out section three and solve it without a time limit. No time limit, just focus on solving every single question correctly. The reason behind it, we'll get more into it in a second. But on the second day, you're going to do section four. Third day, you're not going to do any more sections, but rather you are going to review the mistakes that you made or the questions you got wrong on the first two days. What you have to do on this day is going to be explained in detail in a second, but let's go over the overall big picture. On the fourth day and the fifth day, you're going to do the same thing. Section three, section four, no time limit. Focus on getting every single question correct. And the next day you are going to spend some time reviewing the mistakes and patching the holes. And on the seventh day, what's going to happen is that you are going to take a day off. Yes, you are going to relax and not think about the SAT for at least one day. Because if you just go on and on for on and on for 30 days, you're going to get burnt out and you're going to need about a week of break. And that creates a big, big gap in your studying routine. And that is not good, especially when it comes to studying for the SAT. So to prevent that from happening, we are going to take one rest day for every seven days of studying. And next week, you're gonna repeat the same thing, spend two days to review actually, and then on the 12th day, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take section three and section four timed. So this is like a little diagnostic that you can take every two weeks to find out how much you have improved. And if you've been doing everything correctly, then you are going to definitely see some results. You're gonna see some improvements in your SAT math section score. And the next day, Again, you are going to spend the day reviewing the wrong questions from these exams. And then on the 14th day, you are going to take a break because you need a break. You don't want to get burnt out. And the same thing repeats on next two weeks. Does that make sense? It should be pretty easy to follow. And what you have down here are going to be the exam links, right? So PT1, 3, 5, 6, all that stuff, they are all organized down here. So you don't have to waste time trying to find out these exams. So those are the basic stuff. But let's talk about in detail how to use this study plan. So I wouldn't want you to waste your time doing it the wrong way. So I created a detailed guide on how to use these practice exams efficiently and correctly. So it's something called, known as the practice exam cycle, something I use in my tutoring sessions. So here's the overall big picture. First, you're going to take the exam and you're going to solve one section at a time. Just like we saw here, you're going to solve one section, one section, one section at a time. And when you're solving these sections, do not use time limit. Just do it with unlimited time. Focus on getting every single question right. And you're going to grade the sections with the answer key. And here is the important part. In the identifying stage, what you're going to do is you're going to identify which concepts you are weak on. If you missed a certain question, that means you're probably weak on that concept, which means that's why you got it wrong. And then after you identify that, what you're going to do is you're going to patch up on those weak concepts before you move on to the next practice exam. I've mentioned this in my other videos, but here's the thing. You want to spend 20% of the time here and 80% of the time here because these two last steps, that's where the most improvement happens. So that's the overall picture, but let's talk about it even in more detail so you have no room for confusion. If you're going to spend hours doing these practice exams, I want to make sure that it's worth it and you see improvements from it. So the first step is taking the practice exam without the time limit. What you want to do is you want to first learn how to solve every single question correctly, and then you worry about the time. And that's because if you don't even know how to solve these questions, then you're going to get them wrong regardless of how much time you have. Focus on improving your ability to solve every single question correctly, not quickly. 
See, no matter how quickly you solve these questions, if you're solving them incorrectly, then you're going to get them all wrong and your score is going to be low. People often get these steps mixed up. They want to make sure that they can solve it within 25 minutes and they want to work on solving every single question correctly. But that's like trying to learn how to run first and learn about walking the second. So you're supposed to learn how to walk first and then try running. It's not the other way around. Same thing for the SAT. You try to solve every single question correctly first and then worry about time because if you can't solve these questions correctly, then it doesn't matter how quickly you solve them because you're going to get them all wrong. So that's why for every single practice sections, you're going to solve them without time limits first. And after you solve them, what you're going to do is you're going to grade them. Mark the questions you either got wrong or you might have guessed on. If you guessed correctly on this exam, it doesn't mean you will get so lucky on the real SAT when it actually counts. Don't gamble with your future. So let me explain. So you obviously want to mark the ones you got wrong, but what about the ones that you have guessed on? Why do you have to go back and work on those again when you actually got them right? Well, that's because you didn't get them because you knew how to solve it, but rather you got it right because you actually guessed on it and you got lucky. See, you don't want to base your SAT scores on a luck. Just because you got it right this time doesn't mean you're going to get it right the next time or even on the extra SAT when it actually counts. If you're relying on luck, your score is going to be fluctuating. And what if you're taking the extra SAT and you're not lucky that day? Are you going to take the SAT again and again and again until you get lucky? Come on, that's just silly. Don't do that. Don't rely on luck. Don't gamble with your future. Rather, spend the time now to understand the questions that you have guessed on so that you're relying less on the luck and you're actually relying on your skills. So when you get a question wrong, just mark it wrong, you know, just like that. But if you guessed on something, but you got it right, put a star or triangle next to it like that. One little trick that you can use is while you're solving these questions, just star the ones that you have guessed on. That way, when you're grading the exam, you know which ones you got right, even though you guessed on. And that's more efficient because you don't have to go back to the exam and try to find out which questions you actually have guessed on. You can't remember that. It's better to mark it when you're actually solving these questions. And afterward, what do you want to do? Well, you want to identify the weak points. See, every missed question will reveal the concepts you are weak on. Identify what they are and make a list. And using the list, you need to review the associated concepts before taking the next section. Otherwise, you will miss the exact same type of questions that will show up again, and you're going to be stuck at your current score. When you look at a couple of questions you got wrong, you're going to realize that, oh, I got wrong on exponents. I got wrong on percents. I got wrong on triangles. Every time you get a question wrong, that means these are going to be your weak points. If, you take, you're, if you're taking the next SAT, and if there's a question on exponents, percents, and triangles, you're going to miss them again because you're, you're weak on that concept. It's important for you to know how to solve all of these questions that will show up on the SAT, but it's even more important for you to know which concepts you are actually weak on. If you don't know what you're bad at, then you're always going to miss these questions and you're going to be stuck at your current score. Don't do that. And after you have identified your weak points, what are you going to do? Well, we are going to patch up these weak points. So as I mentioned, the questions you missed on the previous exam, these questions will just show up again because all SAT is, is that it's a repetition of the same type of questions and concepts. The only thing that's different is that they use different scenarios and they use different set of numbers. However, the underlying structure of the question is going to be the same. So for instance, if you missed a question about exponent on the first exam, then the next exam you take, the future exams that you will take, there will be another exponent question. It will be the exact same type of question, except that they're going to give you a different scenario and different set of numbers. However, the idea, the underlying concept within the question is going to be the same. So if you understand why you missed this question and find a way to get it right, then when something similar shows up on the next exam, you are going to get it right again. And that's how you start raising your score. You want to minimize the questions that you get wrong and maximize the question you get right. Getting better at the concepts you are good at is not going to raise your score. You have to become better at the concepts you are actually weak on because that's what's pulling your scores down. So how are you supposed to patch up for these concepts? Well, if you think about the part one, you made these concept summaries, right? So concept summaries you have created from part one's lecture videos will outline exactly what you need for each concept. If you are weak on certain concept, go to the summary, review the materials, and try to solve the question with the materials that were taught in the lecture. See, the lecture videos that you have studied from, they will outline exactly what is tested on the SAT. So if you got an exponent question wrong and you're solving it with some random method that wasn't even taught in the lecture, then you're doing it the wrong way. Don't worry about the other stuff. Just stick to the materials that were taught in the lecture and try to think within the materials. 
It's going to be one of the types that we have learned in the lecture. Maybe you understood everything in the lecture and maybe something is just shaking your head and that's completely normal. You're not going to memorize everything after you just read it, watch it once. That's why you have these summaries and you can quickly skim through these a couple times throughout the week. That's the whole purpose behind these summaries. And furthermore, you can highlight the weak points, right? If you missed a question on exponent and you know, within exponents, we learned a lot of stuff. But if one thing is your weak point, then highlight this weak point so that you know where to put in more time and attention. As I mentioned, if you're good at this and good at that, you don't need to put time into these two things. You have to put more time into the weak concept and get better at the concepts you are actually weak on. And lastly, when you don't understand something, you may be tempted to just skip them, sweep them under the rug and just hope that it doesn't show up on the SAT. Please, please, please do not do that. I've seen students do this so many times and they were always, always, always punished for doing so. And that's because similar questions, the questions that you missed, similar questions to those things will show up on the next exam and you'll get them wrong again if you don't understand now. When you get a question wrong during the practice, you should be happy, you should be glad that you get the question wrong now rather than when it actually counts. What you want to do is you want to push yourself, review the concept summaries that you have made and post questions, ask questions in the Facebook group, which is going to be in the description box down below. There's going to be a link and try again. You can either spend the time to understand how to solve this question now, or you can pay the price later and get it wrong on the actual exam when it actually counts. And one thing you want to remember is that you improve the most when you connect the dots yourself. If people outline exactly how to solve the question, you didn't understand how to solve the question. You know how to solve the question now because they just connected the dots for you. The most improvement actually comes when you actually connect the dots yourself. So try to do it on your own as often as possible. So that's going to be the summer study plan phase two. Taking the practice exam, you want to make sure you're doing it the right way. If you guys have any questions or comments, make sure you leave them in the comment section down below. And if you're studying for the SAT right now with the study plan, then join our Facebook community, which is going to be in the description box as well. So if you guys found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more of these kind of videos, subscribe to the channel and turn the notification bell on, and I'll see you on the next video.